although people may say that they would become believers if God personally appeared to them. But that is not true. The problem is not so much a matter of evidence as it is a matter of the human heart. John 3.19 And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. There are people who are just too in love with darkness for them to repent and believe in God. They love their sin. They are one with their sin. The pleasure that their sin brings is simply something that they don't want to live without. Believing in God requires you to not be in love with this dark world, and that is something the hearts of mankind struggles to do. The heart of men loves this world and all its sin. The heart of mankind loves the pleasures of this world so much that it rejects anything that separates you from this world. Because foundationally, believing in God will require you to live a life of separation from the world, to physically live in the world, but not let the world live in you. In Revelation 3.20, Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. What Jesus addressed in this portion of the Bible is our will. He stands at the door of our hearts and knocks. Although He is our Savior, He will not break into our lives until we open the door of our hearts. If you open your heart for the Lord, He will come into your life. And if you choose to shut the door of your heart from Him, He will not also break into your life, because He respects your will. Jesus has the power to invade people's lives, but such action is against the divine principle by which God relates to humanity. We have to decide to follow Jesus. We have to make the decision to accept Him into our lives, and we have to decide to serve Him wholeheartedly. God will not take away your will. He expects you to surrender to Him. God will never come down to scare people into salvation. If He shows up physically today, He will require that you make a choice. Unbelief is never satisfied. That is one thing you need to know. And remember, unbelief is never satisfied. We have people who will still doubt God even if He shows up. After parting the Red Seas, the Israelites still murmured against God for lack of water, to the point they were considered to stone Moses to death. Our world cannot deny the fact that God has proven beyond reasonable doubts that He exists, yet people will not believe in Him. How do you think this world came to being? Creation itself reveals an order of creation. You don't look at a watch and think it just came out of nowhere. No. When you look at a watch, you know that someone created it. But the earth and the whole universe is no different. There is a creator. How can you look into space and not see a creator? We are not here by accident. We can't be. But people still attempt to paint the picture that there is no God. Unbelief is never satisfied. That is one thing you need to know and remember. Unbelief is never satisfied. The book of Revelation tells us that in the last days, an angel will be sent by God to proclaim the everlasting gospel of Christ to the world. Even at that, people will still harden their hearts. Unbelief cannot be satisfied. People will literally see an angel flying, preaching the gospel, and then still not repent and believe in God. Seeing God won't change that person. You see, if unbelief can be satisfied, Pharaoh and his armies wouldn't have been destroyed. They would have all repented at the first miracle Aaron performed. But when he saw Aaron's rod being turned into a snake, they imitated such supernatural acts by using magic to perform the same. Even after Aaron's snake swallowed up their snakes, 
they were still in doubt until their unbelief led to their destruction. It is not that the Egyptians could not believe in God. They simply chose not to. That is the same thing with our generation. We don't need more signs from God. What we need is a change of heart. God came physically in the world in the person of Christ. Colossians 2.9 says about Christ, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Jesus Christ came as a physical God. He performed various signs and wonders and taught people about heavenly things. He demonstrated the highest level of love by healing the sick and ultimately by laying down his life as the sacrifice for sin. Yet people rejected such a great sacrifice. He promised to resurrect the third day after his death. And when he did, instead of being convicted of sin, the Jews tried to conceal the truth. They paid bribe in attempt to conceal the truth about Christ's resurrection. Matthew 28, 12 through to 15 says, And when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers, saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. And if this comes to the governor's ear, we will persuade him and secure you. So they took the money and did as they were taught. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. This is the extent to which the heart of man is wicked. If God shows up physically, not everyone will believe and be saved. Jesus is the perfect example of this. God's love for you is not based on your performance. Romans 5 verse 8 But God commendeth his love toward us, in that, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. The truth is, it is hard to find someone who will love one truly. People are loving for the gains now. God has always been telling us that He loves us and He showed it to us through Jesus Christ. The kind of love that God has for humanity cannot be found. You may have done something wrong and you believe that for that reason God must have hated you and will never want to talk to you again. Sin will indeed make God go far from one because He cannot behold sin but his love for you will never go far from you. You are not the one that God hates. It is that sin you have committed. The love of God for us doesn't care about the mistakes we have made. The love of God doesn't care if you have initially run from him. Jonah ran from God and he was punished. God did not hate Jonah for running away. All God did was help him come to his senses. You may have gone far from God. You might have gone deep in sin, but God will never hate you. This is a message of hope to everyone who thinks they have lost to the extent that the love of God cannot find them. One thing you should hold on to in this message is that God loves you regardless. Look. God doesn't care what mistake you might have made. What God is after is that you must find his love for you. You need to find the love of God for your life. Jesus did not just come to die in vain. He came because God wanted to show you that he can come in human form to die for you. God wanted to show you that he doesn't care what mistake you have made or what your performance is. He only cares about showing his love for you. Will you let that love be in vain? If you love your life, you will hold on to the love of God for you. It doesn't matter what you have done to yourself. 
It doesn't matter the level you are at now and you think you have gone too far in doing bad things. Do you know what God said about you? Jeremiah 31 verse 3 The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore with loving kindness have I drawn thee. The love of God for you will never end. It doesn't have an end. Don't allow the devil to put guilt in you. Don't allow him to make you think that God hates you. I have heard some people say God is sending people to hell because he hates them. This is wrong. God will never send anyone to hell. God did not say he has created you to go to hell. What takes people to hell is sin. Sin brings death, which is also the second death. And hell was even created for humans. It was created for the devil and his army. God has already told us the truth in the Old Testament about what man will face at the end, but we have the opportunity of choosing. Deuteronomy 30 verse 19 I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. God advised that you choose life. Don't choose hell. What will you choose now? Satan cannot choose for you. God cannot choose for you. God respects your decision. God being completely justified, could have destroyed mankind from the face of the earth. Through being a God of justice and a God of righteousness, there would be no basis for questioning the judgment and the righteousness of God. If God had decided at the very fall of Adam, no more mankind, God completely had the option to destroy humanity from the face of the planet Earth. But God is not only a God of justice, but God is not only a God of righteousness, He is also a God of love, and He didn't destroy the world because of His love for it. You see, God will go extraordinary lengths to keep a person out of it.